Eleven months ago, we released a documentary called Third Adam Three: Rise of the Divine Feminine. And in that documentary, we laid out for you the idea that there is coming a rise of a mystery religion infiltrating the ranks of Christianity, pretending to be Christianity, but it is nothing of the sort. It is a damnable heresy that is sneaking in and infiltrating the ranks of Bible-believing churches. Oftentimes, it is marked by several characteristics, one that, uh, several that is mystical, sensual, and agreeable in nature. And uh, that documentary has gotten over a quarter million views now, and we thank God for that. We even did an extended version of it, Third Adam 3X, which is closing in on 200,000 views in of itself. Uh, folks, I knew this was coming, and it is here. And we're going to talk about it today in the life of Jen Hatmaker. Hey guys, your friend Spencer here. I want to ask you guys, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Go ahead and hit the like button if you will, and that will be a great blessing and a help. Uh, this is the this is the divine feminine. This is how you identify this religion. Basically what this is, this is occultism pretending to be Bible-believing Christianity when it is no such thing. Uh, this, this wicked religion, uh, the seventh vision of the uh, prophet Zechariah said that this was wickedness, and it is. Uh, mystical, sensual, agreeable are the inward aspects of it, but the outward aspects, as you can tell here, is that it is marked by female leadership, freedom from boundaries, and it has a, a feminine goddess. Uh, you're, free, you're free to screenshot this and share this across social media. Uh, that will be a wonderful blessing and tell folks to subscribe to our channel. Uh, the female leadership, I believe that that is the motivation behind all of the female preachers today. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to find false doctrine, find a woman preaching and you will find false doctrine not far behind. Also, freedom from boundaries. These people, according to Jude verse 4, says that they are turning the grace of God into lasciviousness, and that's what they do. And then also, the feminine goddess. These people worship a Holy Spirit uh, that is feminine. They, they worship a woman spirit. Uh, and this is, this is paganism. This is mystery Babylon religion. And you can tell on the screen behind me in the TV back there that we are actually playing Third Adam 3X uh, right there, and uh, that is available for you guys. Go check it out here on YouTube on our channel, and that will be a great blessing. It's actually right there on the home page. You can see Third Adam 3 and Third Adam 3X. Third Adam 3X is over uh, over four hours long, and then of course Third Adam 3 is over two and uh, right at two and a half, something like that. Jen Hatmaker is the popular uh, Christian influencer. I don't think she she's I don't think she's that talented. I don't think she's that smart. And I really don't think she's that Christian. But I want you to notice something she said recently on a podcast or video that she did uh, speaking about Christian religion. And I want you guys to take note here as we watch. Most of us have heard, heard the phrase, at some point, God is a woman, right? Maybe from Ariana Grande, um, or you've maybe you've come across like thoughts and theology from others who have um, really mused about our creator using a wider lens, like scholars and theologians who have spent years and centuries, of course, looking into this um, idea of like the feminine divine. Um, and so as can you imagine, um, there's been quite a, that, that creates quite a swirl um, in the sort of evangelical Western Christian community now, let me explain to you what she's saying. Basically, what she's what she is articulating is what's called Gnosticism. The idea that, God, you know, you see God this big, but then you need to widen it up and uh, see a wider lens of who God is. Uh, the only lens that I need to see who God is is the 66 pages of the divinely inspired copy of the Word of God that I have. That's the only lens that I need to see God. Anything outside of that is erroneous and heretical, but that is what Gnosticism is. Matter of fact, if you go look up Stephen Furtick's uh, famous speech called Hey Haters. He talks about how you people only see God the way you want to see only in black and white and not in full color. He says something to that effect. Stephen Furtick is a Gnostic. And there are other Christian people out there who are trying to talk about this and explain this, but they don't even understand the full aspect of what is going on here. This is mystery religion. This woman is speaking Eastern mystical talk, and uh, this woman is not born again. She's not saved. And so that's why she's saying all that and we will let her continue now um and not just that i mean even others since most religions have had a very strong patriarchal bit since the beginning of time they've been crafted and held together and governed by men 
Yes. Um, and so those in power tend to shape their deities as they want to see them, um, which looks a lot like them, right? You know, so back in the day, somehow Jesus, who's a Jew who lived in the Middle East, ends up being a Caucasian man with blue eyes and long brown hair. Yeah, well, that's that's so stupid, Jen. I mean, no, nobody. The Bible does not say that Jesus was a Caucasian man uh, with blue eyes and blonde. That that's just not even true. The Bible does not say that. Uh, basically, that there was Michelangelo depicted Jesus as that, and all the New Age people are the ones who are depicting Jesus that way. But not the Word of God. You are con, you are con, con, being contradictory in your own thinking here. That's not what it says. Literally, over here usually wearing like white robes. I don't know. Maybe that was the heart was right. I don't know about fashion, but um, crafted into a different image. Um, it's interesting though, viewing Jesus as a white man and God as father or as, you know, let me just say, no orthodox view of Christianity ever in the history of the world has ever depicted Jesus as a white man. That that's, this is, She's revealing her wokeness here, and I find that to be quite absurd, what she just said. That's like so intellectually dishonest. I don't even know where to start with that. A man, period, emerging from the clouds, like with this stern disposition and um, this sort of ruling with an iron fist and this powerful, almost punitive approach to humanity generally serves one group of people in one gender, this idea, which makes it so painful and difficult for black and brown and female and LGBTQ plus communities to see themselves in this personification, not just see themselves, but feel safe with this guy, right? To feel cherished, to feel protected, to feel included. Um, See that right there is, this is woke ideology, trying to look at the Bible through woke ideology. Uh, this woman has been bewitched, as the book of Galatians teaches, who hath bewitched you. She's gotten into witchcraft. Uh, that's why she says the thing that she says. Uh, you're not supposed to see yourself in God. That's not what you're supposed to see. You're supposed to see God in God, not yourself in God. And the idea that you don't feel welcome or you don't feel a part of this God, well, that's 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 true because none of us deserve a part from God. All of us have missed the mark. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. And all of us have no part in, in who God is. And that's where the gospel comes in because the gospel, by receiving Christ as our Savior, allows us to be part and have, have something to do with God. We become joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We become a part of the, we become adopted in the family of God, accepted in the beloved. That's what the Bible clearly teaches. And what Jen Hatmaker is saying here is she's preaching a different gospel that does not include uh, the idea that, yes, there is sin and sin has separated us from God, but Jesus Christ has made a way for us to come to God. And what she, what this woman is saying, I mean, this woman is more confused theologically than a termite in a yo-yo. I mean, this, lady's, this lady literally needs the gospel, needs to get saved, and she is not somebody that you Christian and ladies need to be listening to. So it is the work of a lifetime, honestly, to upend those images and ideas of God and Jesus that we've been shown, well, at least for me, my whole life. Um, Because there's something about this certainty around that type of um, just stern and strong and punitive God, that maybe the certainty of it feels good. Um, But I wonder, like, what if there's mystery? What if there's more mystery here than we've been taught? Um, Then Uh, stop. Let me stop right there. That what she just said, what if there's more? That right there is what the Bible calls seduction, spiritual seduction. And it is very, this is like the epitome of it right here. That's, that's, that's how all physical seduction start. And a spiritual seduction is happening right before your eyes. What if there's more? That's exactly what she's saying. He's been allowed to consider. Um, what if God isn't something or someone we can personify to fit our view of him? Like, what if one of the main things that the Bible tells us about God, that he is love, like that center part, doesn't actually look like anything we can paint to suit our view, but really can only be defined in that he is representative of 
all the people that he created, just as love is for all, right? That's not, that's nonsense. That is not an outlier idea. That's nonsense. I mean, if, if that is the, the, the key message of how Jesus tried to get us to understand who God is and was that love was the center of it, then it stands to reason that every human person in creation has a place with that, that God is representative of the people, right? Love is not the center of God. Holiness is the center of God. And for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Okay, that, that's the, the, his love uh, had to find a way to pacify the holiness of God and to satisfy the wrath of God. We are unholy creatures, and so God's holiness had to be satisfied. And, uh, and, but the center of God is not, is not love, it's holiness. These are hard discussions. And um, they break apart some notions that feel safe to a lot of us, um, but they're good and they're important because they expand our thoughts. They expand our, um, our beliefs or even just our curiosity to this idea, this possibility that God cannot just be defined in one way, right? Yes, he can. He, he can be defined in one way because God is not some multiple. Basically, if, if God is not one God, then you have Hinduism, and you have Greek mythology, all the gods of gods of gods of gods, and this this is how God personifies Himself. And God, this this woman is preaching paganism. That's exactly what this is. Okay. And she need <laughs> look that and that's the end of the clip right there. But Jen Hatmaker, for all intents and purposes, uh, the divine feminine has risen in her heart and in her life. This woman is teaching heretical things. This this mystery Babylon religion is what she believes in and what she's into now. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you have not seen Third Adam Three: Rise of the Divine Feminine, please I beg you go watch this documentary. It will change your life. It'll change the way you see the world. It will change everything about it just what you see is happening. And by the way, all this Roe versus Wade stuff that's going on right now, uh, you, you're about to see the full wrath of the divine feminine unleashed on this world. It is going to be a wild thing. And if you want to go see third Adam three X over four and a half hours long, a lot of material there. We cover Gnosticism, mysticism, the Knights Templar. We cover, uh, the modern Christian music movement and the new age movement. Uh, we get into Roman Catholicism. We get into all kinds of stuff, baby. You better put your big boy britches on if you're watch that one it is a hot rod buddy and uh, there's so much happening and uh, we deal with uh, we, we try to deal with every angle of it that we can and of course this is our work and we appreciate you guys supporting it and uh, please consider becoming a channel member dropping a super thanks even on this video right here you can join and be a part of this we've got a lot of special things planned for our channel members we appreciate you guys and uh, don't don't forget to like this but this video and help us with the YouTube algorithm. That's a great way to do that. Jen Hatmaker is one of many that the divine feminine has arisen in their heart and in their life. And uh, you, you need to be aware of this because this you do not want to be caught sleeping with this going on. This is a huge deal, a major development. This stuff is happening and you don't want to miss it. God bless you all and we will see you all very soon. Have a good day.